My bagration force is pretty much finished, so this video is just looking at the final stages of the process. To be honest, I was actually too busy painting to meet the tournament deadline to really film the process in detail, so this last section is just not as well documented. Let's refresh your memory. In the last video, the vehicles had been sprayed Russian 4BO green from a Vallejo rattle can. This was the first of the Vallejo cans that I'd used, and I was delighted with the results. The infantry were base coated in their uniform colours, boots and flesh, but there was still basing and detail painting to go. Similarly, the ZIS-3 gun battery had the figures mostly base coated as well. That made a big difference and they were starting to look more finished. The IL-2 Sturmoviks were less advanced, but I had assembled them and drilled the holes in them for the flight stands. That was the state of play. Let's see how it all turned out. Let's start with the infantry. Here are the ZIS-3 guns and the DP rifle teams. The detail painting is well advanced and the bases have been painted Vallejo 70983 Flat Earth. The rocks have been painted 70884 Stone Grey. Rifles are 70875 Beige Brown with Citadel Lead Belcher for the metal parts. The SMG company is up to the same level and has had an Agrax Earthshade wash on the base texture followed by a blend of Woodland Scenics flock attached with thinned PVA glue. The only detail painting left was the wooden MG stocks and the webbing, bags and bedrolls which I hadn't got around to. Maybe one day. One feature I did have time for was to paint a set of unit markings on the bases. For the Hero SMG company that was six SMG bases marked with dots or bars. The SMG command team had a wide bar while the Commissar team had a wide bar and dot. It's just a simple system to keep track of the different teams. Ironically, I took the SMG teams out of my bag to paint these base markings the day before I had to leave to travel to the tournament. I forgot to put them back and managed to leave them behind. I am an imbecile. The ZIS-3 guns are next up. These are at the same level of completion as the infantry stands painted and flocked, but with maybe the odd detail still remaining to be picked out. The ZIS-3 sprue contains a planning table with maps, and I've used this to identify the command team of the battery. The guns themselves are straight 4BO green. They haven't been washed or dry brushed. I ran out of time. They were okay for the day, and I did remember to pack these in the bag to take along to the game, so that's a bonus. The Sturmoviks were a bit of a challenge. I brush painted the undersides of the aircraft with Tamir XF23 light blue. The weather was a problem as the paint was drying too fast in the heat, and this caused some visible brush marks. I used several thin coats and built up the colour slowly. It's okay, but not brilliant. If I'd had the time, I should have sprayed this, but the final result was good enough. The upper camouflage was the 4BO green and flat earth. The 4BO was sprayed and the brown brushed on. The brown coverage was a bit uneven and probably could have used another coat. I used the red star and number decals that came with the kit. One set was fine, the other one not so much, as we'll see later. Soviet aircraft markings can be pretty sparse. I followed the placement shown on the Battlefront website, but later found out wing markings are not really a thing. Soviet aircraft usually sport just side and tail stars. The issue with the second set of decals became apparent when I sprayed them with Tester's dull coat. This set was fine, but on the second aircraft the dodgy decals bubbled up, crinkled and shifted position. You can't really see quite how bad it is in the video here, but it was a mess. I gave the dull coat some time to dry, and managed to soften and reposition the mangled decals a bit with Microsol. Once they fully dried they weren't perfect, but they were a lot better. Maybe in future I'll brush varnish them before I spray a dull coat. The armour got a fairly simple paint job. This image shows the KV-8s mostly completed with a wash, dry brush and decals. In contrast, the IS-2s just have the 4BO base colour spray with their commanders painted. I painted the tracks with Citadel lead belcher. This is a bit fiddly because on both the IS and KV tanks the upper track run is visible as well but with a bit of care you can do it without needing much in the way of touch-ups. 
Once the tracks were dry, I gave the upper surfaces of each tank a liberal coat of Agrax Earthshade. This darkens the bright 4BO and gives a very dirty tone to the paint job. It also picks out panel lines, hatches and other details. You can go light or heavy with this to suit your own tastes. I went fairly heavy. Once the top surfaces were dry, I turned the hulls on their side to wash the tracks and running gear. There's lots of nice detail inside the road wheels that a wash can bring out. This also helps to hide any ragged edges in the paint job around the wheels and tracks. Turning the tracks up like this stops the wash pooling at the bottom and gives a more even effect. The final step is a dry brush to bring out the edges and contours of the model. I use Vallejo 70819 Iraqi Sand for this. Again, you can go heavy or light. I dirtied mine up fairly heavily. It looks like it's too much up close, but at three feet away on a tabletop it looks more normal. Here you can see how the sand colour highlight changes the overall colour to a more olive green than the original quite green spray colour. I generally use this sand colour highlight on all my builds, but in this case I think maybe a lighter green colour might have worked better instead. This would have maintained the green rather than giving this more dusty olive colour. I did adjust the technique a bit for the IS-2s and IS-85s. I used the same process and colours, but stuck to edge highlighting rather than the more extensive dry brush of the surfaces. This gave me a darker but still greener result that I quite liked. The dry brush was also used to bring out the contours of the turret faces. That worked pretty well too. The decals added just a little splash of colour and numbered the tanks in the unit. I left a number gap between the IS-2s and the IS-85s to accommodate another platoon of IS-2s later if I want to. So that's everything finished ready for the tournament. I dry brushed and decaled the tanks on the evening before I had to leave home to travel to the tournament, but I did make it. There were still a few details I'd add to just about every unit, but they were ready enough not to be embarrassing to put on the table. Was it my best work? Not really. I was pushed for time at the end and had to cut corners or make compromises here and there. The Sturmovic Deckel disaster cost me half a day and quite a few swear words. Those of you who've been following along will also note that I didn't use James Workshop's winter whitewash camo option that first sparked this list. That was just cowardice. In the end, I just couldn't bring myself to try it. Maybe I'll give it a go another day. Sorry, James. If you haven't seen James's video on modelling for advantage, the link is in the description. Check it out. Maybe you guys are more courageous than me. Thank you for following along with this journey to build a Soviet force from scratch. I hope you enjoyed seeing how the units finished up for the tournament. In the next video in this series I'll talk about how the tournament went. We were too busy playing to shoot too many pictures, but there are a few snaps of my forces on the tabletop. There will also be a bit of a post-mortem on what I could have done differently, as well as identifying the surprise performers in my list. There was one unit that consistently punched above its weight. More about that in the next video.